So I understand you guys have already learned a lot of awesome things about space this morning, right? Seen some stuff, try some stuff out? So if I offered you a round trip ticket to space right now, who would take me up on it? Show of hands. All right, let's go for a six mile run. Everybody with your hands up, let's go. Ready? If you had any hesitation right there, you might want to sit back down and listen to what you have to do to prepare to go to space, what you have to do while you're up in space to stay conditioned, and then what you have to do when you get back to Earth. So today we're going to talk about, as I just mentioned, what astronauts do before they even leave Earth and Earth's atmosphere. What they do while they're up in space, um, they don't just float around um, and have um, a fun time being weightless. They do a lot of hard work so they can carry out their missions. And then when they return to Earth, the, the job's not done. They have a long way to uh, go to readjust to Earth's atmosphere. But before we begin and, and talk about what astronauts do on space, in space, we need to talk about a couple principles of fitness. So let's say if I tried to do as many push-ups as I could, right now maybe I could do 40 in a row without stopping. But I want to do 100. I want to get up to 100 from 40. So what should I do? If I do five push-ups today, maybe do five on Thursday, five on Friday, do you think by Saturday I could do 100? No, absolutely not. There is a principle, and it's called the principle of overload. And what this means is the body needs a stimulus greater than what it's used to if we're going to adapt. And so that's true for flexibility. So if I'm stretching, that's true for muscular strength and endurance. So if we want to receive any benefits, we have to overload the system. So let's say I come up with an awesome training plan, and I get to 100 push-ups. And then I'm like, OK, I'm done with training. This was, this was fun, but I want to try something else. If I don't do a push-up for a year, you think a year later I'll I'll still be able to do 100? Because I could a year before, right? So a year later, you don't think I could? You're right. And that's because we have the principle of reversibility. So our training will revert to baseline levels once we stop. Um, we will no longer have those benefits. And so really, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So I want you to keep these two principles in mind when we talk about what astronauts go through as they prepare for space. So when an astronaut uh, reports to the center on Earth, when they haven't even been selected for a mission yet, as soon as they get there, they start their physical training. And it's, a pr it's pretty much a general conditioning program they do. Two years before they leave Earth is when they're typically assigned for their specific mission. And so that's when it becomes more specific as how they prepare their bodies. Are they going to be on the moon? Are they going to be on the space station? Are they going to be working on? Um, different pieces of equipment that require different skills. But there are three systems that they specifically target in their training here on Earth. And so the first is the cardiovascular system. And as you probably know, the cardiovascular system comprises our heart, blood, and blood vessels. And so astronauts need to have good cardiovascular fitness. And so while they're here on Earth, they do a lot of typical Earth exercises maybe like you and me, they do some running, they do some cycling, they'll do some swimming. But they also have a special apparatus. This is a vertical treadmill, so the belt rotates vertically while the, the astronaut is suspended, so they feel weightless, and they're actually running horizontally there. So they use this contraption to help prepare them for the weightlessness in space. They also have to prepare their musculoskeletal system, so the, their muscles, as well as their skeleton or their bones. And so, similarly, they'll do some exercises that maybe you and I do. They'll lift dumbbells, they'll lift barbells, they'll use cables to overload their system so that they get strong. They'll also do a lot of rock climbing. So when they're in space, they're not able to just walk across their space station to get whatever they need. They're pushing and pulling themselves to get from one place to the other to the next. And so they do rock climbing and other lateral training so that they strengthen these muscles. And then the final uh, thing they do, as you can see here in the bottom right, they perform a walk back exercise. And so this is both cardiovascular and muscle, musculoskeletal conditioning. But what they do is they're in an astronaut suit, which is actually really heavy here on Earth. It's 
couple hundred pounds here on Earth, so they have this suspension system to give them that weightless feeling. But they have to be able to walk 6.2 miles in this suit because that's how far the rover can go from their space station. So if they're out on a mission and their rover breaks down, they only have a given amount of life support in their suit. So they absolutely have to be able to walk these 6.2 miles in a given time so that they can survive and carry out the rest of their missions. And so here you see an astronaut who's preparing for that walk back test. Lastly, they train their sensory motor system. So this is dealing with balance and understanding where your position is in, um, in space. So for us, that's pretty easy. We have a lot of visual cues. We see the floor, we see the ceiling, the walls, we see the people beside us, the objects beside us. And so that gives us an idea of where we're at. In space, that's not always the case, right? Sometimes you're upside down when everybody else is upright um, and things are just floating around. So you become really disoriented. And this device right here is a treadmill, and the plate beneath it actually rotates side to side. And so they walk on it, and they don't know what direction it's going to turn, but as they're walking and that's moving, they see this big screen in front of them, and it will show twisting hallways and big rooms that are disoriented. And so it's preparing their system for what they might experience up in space. So they're kind of getting a head start on that adaptation. In addition to what I already showed you, NASA has a couple different facilities they also use to prepare their astronauts. The first is Aquarius. So the astronauts will um, spend 7 to 14 days uh, in underwater missions. And so they spend about 10 hours each day in the water. And this is actually the environment that simulates the lunar environment the greatest, because you have a little bit of gravity but not a lot. And so as you can see, they're using a ladder, so some of that pushing and pulling mechanics that they're going to need to use in space. We also have the KC-135 aircraft, so an airplane that goes up and down, so it forms these parabolas. And during that parabola, there's a time of weightlessness, or where they're actually free falling, but inside the plane. And so each parabola lasts about 65 seconds, and of that 65 seconds, about 25 they actually get this feeling of weightlessness where they get to float around inside the aircraft. Unfortunately, about two-thirds of the astronauts that are preparing get sick. They don't handle this very well, and so for that reason, it's known as the vomit comet. And then another facility they have are drop towers. So these are really, really tall towers that not, don't necessarily extend up into the air, but actually go deep down into the ground. And so there's these capsules, as you can see the red and white checkered thing up there, these capsules that the astronauts go into, and then they're dropped down these towers. And this particular one is about 430 feet tall, or deep, I guess. And so as they're dropping, they have about five seconds where they feel that weightlessness. So these are just a few. There's others. Um, they're always trying to come out with the newest facilities that can truly prepare an astronaut for the demands of space. So what is gravity? Sometimes it's one of those things that we almost take for granted. We don't realize how beneficial it can be until it's removed. By definition, gravity is the force of attraction between all masses in the universe, but especially the attraction of the Earth's mass for bodies near its surface. So as we leave the surface, we are no longer subject to um, the gravitational pull from Earth. And so space is a microgravity environment. and as we have kind of talked about this principle of overload, if you don't have that gravity that's providing some overload, um, it can be detrimental. And so even though you might see pictures like this, which makes it look like astronauts are super strong up in space, that's not necessarily the case. So next we're going to talk about what actually happens to the astronaut in their body when they're up in space. So we'll take a look at the cardiovascular system. So they've been training this whole time so their heart, lungs work well and efficiently. But our heart right now is constantly pumping against gravity. So that gravity is providing an overload. So the heart will actually start to get smaller while they're up in space. Also, 
there's a lot of fluid that gravity pulls down towards our feet and legs, and without that gravity, um, it, it actually rushes up towards our head. And so you can see that on the right, his face is a little more puffy. If you touched it, it'd actually be a little more squishy because you can feel that fluid that's now settling up in the face. Similarly, um, this is a cartoon of what happens, but in space, you can see all that fluid floats upward, and so they talk about uh, astronauts having bird legs up in space, and bird legs when they come back because of the fluid, um, as well as the decrease in the muscle size. So taking a look at the musculoskeletal system, if it's not overloaded on a daily basis or like it's used to, we'll see a decrease in muscle size. So we'll see atrophy. And this is especially pronounced in the lower body because when we're walking around everywhere, we're using all these muscles. And we're using them probably more than we even think. But when they're up in space, they're no longer using their muscles as much. And so they'll see a great reduction very quickly in the size of their muscles. And this also means that their strength and endurance will decrease and they'll have greater fatigue that will um, occur more frequently and more severely. If we take a look at what happens to the skeletal system, we have both cortical bone, which is more of the um, solid outlining, as well as the trabecular, which is the lattice interlocking on the inside of our bones. And both of those, um, you'll see this decrease, not quite as severe um, as we see here on the far right, but it's very, very similar to what happens during osteoporosis. Um, and so you'll see this rapid progression if something's not used to overload the bones during space. And it's estimated that for each month an athlete is up in space, they'll lose 1% of their bone mineral density, which is crazy. So if they're up there for a whole year, they could lose upward of 12% of their bone mineral density, which could put them in this lower range over here. And then lastly, the sensory motor system. The first couple days in space are the roughest, but our body is really amazing and it adapts quickly. So after those first couple days, the body is able to get used to things floating around um, or the astronaut themselves floating around. And so um, they're able to get a handle of that on that after the first couple days. So we talked about the heart gets smaller, our muscles get smaller, we lose our strength, endurance, we fatigue more quickly, our bones start to deteriorate. So what can we do to offset the detrimental effects of microgravity? Any ideas? They can exercise. If I wanted to increase my push-ups and be able to do 100 here on Earth, I have to overload my body. They can overload their body in space. They just have to be a little more creative of how they can do that without gravity being present. So astronauts will exercise for at least two and a half hours a day, sometimes more than once. And they have three primary pieces of equipment that they use to overload their body. And we'll take a look at each of these. So we have the cycle ergometer, um, very typical to a cycle ergometer here on Earth. They do have to be strapped in so that the, when they're pushing and moving those pedals, they don't push themselves right off of the machine. Um, but this has been incorporated into many um, space shuttles. They also have treadmills. So once again, they are harnessed in so that they don't push themselves right off, and um, they have a lot of different settings. We'll actually watch a video of this in just a second of an astronaut performing exercise on the treadmill. And she'll talk more about the harnesses and the special plates that they're on. And then we also have the ARED, so the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device. And this is a way for them to perform resistance exercises. We can't bring dumbbells and barbells up to space because they just float around and they wouldn't provide any overload. But this has, um, you can kind of see the capsules, I don't know, the blue, kind of in the blue standards right here. And they have some cables inside there and it's kind of almost like a hydraulic type of resistance. But they can create up to 600 pounds of resistance through this ARED. And so they can do deadlifts, they can do squats and presses. They can load the body in a variety of different ways with this one device. And even though they do all this exercising for multiple hours a day, when they return to Earth, they are extremely fragile because 
They, they aren't ready for the gravitational pull. Talked about being dizzy. They have a hard time walking around corners. They can't drive for a while because they're so disoriented. Um, but shortly after they uh, get their bearings, they'll start working out again. And they'll go seven days a week for multiple hours with their strength and conditioning coaches to help build back all that they lost. So I hope this gives you an idea of what astronauts do to prepare for space, what they do up in space to stay active, and as well as when they return. But to give you an even better idea, I want you to go ahead and experience some of the, the exercises that they do. So we have some stations set up over here. And so if you could get up and go ahead and pick either the um, AirX pads, which are blue. We have um, ladders in the back. So about one third of you to each station and um, we'll get you started. Thank <laughs> you. 